You know what it is. That's right. It's time to talk money with your money nerd and financial coach. Now, tighten those purse strings and open those ears. It's the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast. So today I'm super excited because I have a FinCon friend, um, Rachel Murphy, on the line. So Rachel has worked with young people for almost 25 years as a youth director, a foster parent, and a mentor to young adults. And she's also a mom to five children ages 8 to 24. Through the years, she became aware of how many teens are lacking easily taught life skills that would help them as they launch out on their own. Her family started raising confident teens to help teach life and leadership skills to teens and their parents. So she's the main host of the Raising Confident Teens podcast. And Rachel is also the author of the newly released book, I Am Not Your ATM, Amen, A Practical Plan for Teens teaching your team to manage money. So before we get started on our conversation today, I want to shout out our sponsor for today's podcast and our sponsor is Jasmine Mortgage Team. Jasmine and her team knows financing your real estate will pay big dividends to your net worth and you can sign up for a free consultation on her website at jasminemortgageteam.com. Now Jasmine Mortgage Team specializes in mortgages for new home purchases, refinances, cash out refinances, jumbos, conventionals, FHAs, Dr. Loans, pretty much all the flavor of mortgage you can ever think of. Um, so if you're interested, definitely check out jasminemortgageteam.com. Again, that is jasminemortgageteam.com. All right. So now that that's out the way, hey, Rachel, how are you today? I'm doing awesome. Awesome. Thanks for uh, inviting me to hang out with you. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you because as you know, the audience might have got from the intro, we'll be talking about teens and money. Now, I have a soon-to-be teenager, and so I was like, I would love to get some juice <laughs> on <laughs> how to make sure that he's good with money. So before we get into that conversation, I do want to preface. So when it comes to teens, what ages, I know, is it from 13 to 19? Is that what you consider a teenager? You know, it depends on the kid. Like some kids are really mature 10, 11, right? And then some kids, it just takes them a while. You just, it's like, it's personal. Personal finance, that's the way you need to do it with your teens too. It's personal. Like, I can't tell you the nitty gritty. I can tell you the broad idea of how to do it. And you have to tailor it for your family because you're going to have different needs. You're going to have a different income. Uh, you have a different amount of kids, you know, you're going to live in a different part of the country. So you just have to tailor it to fit you. And I think that's the problem that a lot of people have with personal finance. I just want you to tell me what to do. Just tell me exactly how much I should put in there. Like, I cannot do that because you make a different amount than I do. So you're going to have to figure it out. Yes. And, you know, people, because, <laughs> you know, I'm always like, it depends, you know, but it's so true. Like, it depends on so many different factors. So what I hope we can accomplish today is just give a broad overview of how people can talk to their teens about money or, you know, what type of things they can implement, some tips and tricks <laughs> um, on yes. how they can get their teens, you know, engaged. So let's start there. How do we get our teens engaged? Because I know, for instance, with my child, um, he is all on his phone all the time, all on the game, um, you know, and it's crazy when you look at YouTube, a lot of the influencers and stuff are gamers. Um, you know, I, I joke and say, do I need to play games while I'm talking about money <laughs> so kids can pay attention? But how do you get your teenagers engaged in these conversations? Yeah, that's a good question. I think a lot of parents default to the lecture, which does not work. It's kind of like Charlie Brown's teacher. Like this is how they hear. Wah, 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 wah. And uh, you know, um, when, when I've talked to my parents and my in-laws about how they taught us, my parents did a pretty good job. Um, my husband's parents, they say they taught him about money, but if you ask him, he says, I didn't learn anything. Right. Because I think back then, especially it was the lecture, you know, save, you need to save. Well, what does that really mean? I mean that, and, and how do I know when I'm done? Right. Or, or, you know, um, don't get into debt. Well, what does that really mean? Right. So <clears throat> for teenagers, the, it, it's funny. Um, a study was recently done by iGrad 
and they talked about the components that make a successful financial literacy program. So we're all talking about how we want to get financial liter literacy in schools and we need to get financial literacy in schools. And I agree with that to a degree. I agree with that as a starting place because some kids will get nothing, right? But if you think about it, how, what does that mean? For most schools, it's half a credit. So in ninth grade, you might take this financial literacy class. You're going to learn one time how to do a budget. And they expect you to remember that when you get out on your own. You're not going to, I can't remember what I did last week, right? So, so they found that the three components that make a financial literacy program work are it has to be relevant. So I'm not going to be talking to them too much about, hey, when you get to be 65, this is what, you know, you need to have. Because because that just doesn't compute in their brain. But if I were to say, hey, how are we going to save for that car? That, that might be something that they can understand, right? It has to be repetitive. So, you know, doing it one time, that's not going to work. And it has to be interactive. It has to be something that they can be involved in. So, like, if you, if you go to school and you have this you know, financial literacy class. And the problem says, John has $1,000 in the bank and he's making 3% interest. How much will John have in a year, right? That is a word problem. That means nothing to their life. But if I were to say, hey, you have $100 here in your hand, right? You know, that is a totally different scenario. So a, a lot of parents are afraid to teach their kids about money because they weren't taught about money or because they feel like they're not winning themselves with money. And they're like, who am I to teach my kids? But I think that you are the perfect person to teach your kids about money because you are living life with them every day. And when you mess up, you can say, hey, I messed up here. You know, I shouldn't have done this because they need to see that we mess up, right? A lot of times we tend to want to be the perfect parent and only show them all the how great we are, you know, right? Because we don't want them to see our faults, but they need to see. Because then that way when they have a mistake, they don't feel like, oh, I'm such a horrible person. My parents never made mistakes. You know, I, I'm not measuring up because they need to see that that's just part of the human existence is making mistakes, right? So here's how we do it practically. When our kids get to be about 11, 10, 11, 12, depends on the kid, we start turning parts of the budget over to them that are related to them. So, you know, a lot of people do this giving, spending, saving envelopes or jars. And I think that that is a great start, but, but for a lot of families, that is as far as it gets, right? They don't know what to do past that. So it's a good start, but is it really realistic? Because think about it, what adult gets to blow 80% of their income on fun stuff, right? None of us. Um, <laughs> we have to get to the point where we realize there are needs that we have every every month and they have to be taken care of, right? And so we try to set it up so they're practically experiencing life as a little adult almost, you know, and get to practice and practice and practice and practice for years and years because you have them in your, your, they're kind of trapped in your house. So, <laughs> so they have no choice but to fall in line. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Um. No, but, but my kids love it. They love it doing it this way. So, so like, say, I know your kids like um, to play games. Do you give them any money for that? No. Well, okay. So <laughs> how we do it is, you know, for instance, they want to have the Fortnite thing where you have to pay every month or whatever. Um, and so I'm like, okay, so how are we going to afford that? Um, you know, <laughs> are you all going to do some extra chores or, you know, what, it, cause that has to be tied to something like this isn't, right, right. this isn't something that just falls off of a tree um, and you right. just have it. So like my kids, they definitely, um, if they don't have it in their piggy bank or in their bank account, then they have to do something in order to get that money and be able to sustain it. So they do understand That's great. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they have a fortnight budget. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're learning every month I have to have this expense if I want to if I want to do that. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's part of it. Um, so what we do is like, you know, there's a lot of money that we, that goes through our hands to spend on our kids. And so we just kind of funnel it. So it goes through them first before it gets paid. So like, say you go to the gas station every week and get ICs. I don't know. I'm, some parents might do that. Um, how about they had it for the very beginning, the starting point, how about if they had an icy budget, you give it to them once a month, and they have to manage it the whole month. And if they blow it on something else, 
sorry you don't get an IC, but it's not like you got $5,000 in debt because, you know, we waited to teach you until you got out and you don't know what you're doing, right? And the, the stakes are a lot smaller. It doesn't hurt so much, right? So like, say lunch money, you give them the money once a month. They have to use it for their for lunch money at school. What happens if they blow it? They got to pack a lunch. It's not it's not as painful, right? So we start out small with just a few little things that don't hurt that much, and then every year we add categories and we add their salary. So they get a salary once a month, and it goes at our at our house with our teenagers. It direct deposits to their account, so I don't even have to handle the money. I don't have to do anything. They never come to me asking for money unless it's something unexpected, right? So, so practically, how does that look? Well, you start out little with, with things like, you know, lunch money. And then as they get older, it could be like, hey, they're in sports. They're, they're um, at games all the time. They need concession money. Well, how about you give it to them at the beginning of the season or once a month? And then they, you're not every week going... Here's a twin, you know, because <laughs> it does feel like you're an ATM if you do that it that way. Yeah. And, you know, I'm over here thinking because I'm like, they both need their hair done. Like my youngest need his hair cut. Right. My Haircuts. oldest need his hair twisted because he has locks like me. And I'm like, huh? Like I could yep. be like, OK, here's your allotted budget for the month. Well, maybe not with my youngest because he's too little. But for right. my oldest, I'm like, OK, here's the money to get your hair done. So, you know, you either get your hair done or you just go and walk around with your hair not that <laughs> right <laughs> or right. um you know when it comes to like the Fortnite stuff now that's something that my youngest son can apply because you know that's not something that's like upkeep um that's just extra um right. so keep that in place but then you said you give them a salary now is that salary that they work for it or they just get a no. certain amount every month and this is this is money that we would have spent on them anyway um if they want to work they can get extra money Right. So like haircuts, um, if you go out to eat as a family, like once a week, give a, put that in their salary. Um, if you buy birthday gifts for their friends, figure out how much you tend to spend on that and put that in their salary. If you buy teacher gifts for Christmas, put that in their salary. Um, school supplies, um, if they're older gas for their car, um, you know, you could, anything that you spend on them, you, you you could a lot of families do this with clothing, right? And that's the only category they do. But but it makes them more mindful of the value of the dollar. I know here a lot of parents say, "My kids don't appreciate how much we spend on them." Well, if you start letting them see the money coming out, they're go- like like they're going to be at the restaurant and they're going to be saying, "I'll have water," <laughs> right? Because <laughs> they'll be like, "If I save this three dollars here, I can like use it somewhere else." And it takes away a lot of the mom guilt because I mean I got five kids. We used to go to restaurants and we'd be like, "Hey, everybody, get water, right?" <laughs> and I would feel like they're mad at me. They probably weren't, but I would feel like, "Oh, I'm I'm upset that that we're having to get water." But you start turning over to them, and it's like they can decide for themselves of what they're gonna do. Yeah, and they do What's start getting water. <laughs> yeah, one time we went out, um, and my son was like. Everybody's like, what's up with him down there? And he had just gotten a side order of mashed potatoes and a water. And I'm like, he's okay. Don't worry about it. He has money. He just he just doesn't want to spend. And then he just ate all his friend's leftovers. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, oh, you're not going to eat that? He's a teenage boy, you know. Um, but they get a lot more resourceful and they, they appreciate money more. And, you know, you hear parents say, well, I buy them clothes and I find them on the floor in the closet with the tags on it and they've outgrown them and they never wore them. That will not happen if they're, if they're using their own money and they're having, they'll return that. Right. Or find some, some way to make money off of it. Um, it just, it just puts them in control, which they love. Teenagers love to be in control. They don't like to have to go to mom and you know, in front of all their friends and say, can I have $10 to go, you know, to go do this? You know, it's like, I'm a big man. I'm whipping out the wallet. Right. And, you know, it, it forces them to be, um, scrappy when they, you know, Hey, I really want to do this, but I don't have the money. How can I earn some more money? Like one of my kids, you know, she would, 
uh, she run, wanted to go on this trip. The you know the candy bar, the candy bar sales. You know she she sold enough candy bars, but she still needed some money for something. I don't know. So I'm like, sure you can go, but you're gonna have to come up with the money. So she was like, huh, okay. How about we brainstormed? How about you? Um, Cause she was the kid that liked to cook and bake. How about you make? Say I'm gonna make these three desserts. You know, chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter pie. So it'll be a cheesecake. I'll make these three desserts. This is how much they'll cost. Will you post something on your Facebook and take orders for me? And that's how she earned money. You know, a little pop-up shop, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or they'll go out and mow yards. Or, you know, they'll do whatever. But it just, it gives them the practice over and over and over. Which is what they will not get if you give them just one time in a financial literacy class. Like girls and their haircuts, they, the, this was a good, le- there's a lot of unintended lessons that you'll get that you didn't even think of. Like girls don't get haircuts every month normally, but they're going to have to put aside money every month so that when it's time for the haircut, it, they'll have the money. Kind of like your car insurance, you know, it does, it may not come out every month, but when it hits at the six month, you're like, oh my word, <laughs> Ooh. where did that come from? Right. That wasn't, in, you know, some people don't think to put it in their budget and then it hits and then they're like freaking out. So they learn about sinking funds. They learn about, oh, maybe I need to put aside some like mad money or slush money. Like what if somebody comes to me unexpectedly and, oh, we're all going to go to this movie. What if I don't have the money for it? You know, maybe I should have a little bit of cushion there. You know, and then they learn how to reconcile and they learn how to make sure that, you know, everything's right. So, so, you know, think about it. If you don't teach your kids these things when they're at home and they get out on their own, you know, if you teach them when they're at home, one or two debits in in the account to start with. And then the next year, maybe there's, you know, five or six. And then, you know, every year there's every month they have more and more activity in their accounts. But if you don't teach them this, They've never reconciled. They've never had to do anything with their account. And then all of a sudden they're out on their own. They have a bank account. There's a hundred transactions on there. What do I do? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you can slowly, it's kind of like learn teaching your kid to drive a car. When I teach my kids to drive, we start out in the church parking lot down the street. And then we go to a subdivision. And then we go to a road that's not so busy. And then we go to a busier road. And then I take them into town. And then we go to the interstate. Well, a lot of parents, it's, oh, we got the savings giving spending jar. That's like the church parking lot. And then we're going from there to, the hey, okay, we're going to the Atlanta interstate in the rain <laughs> at night, right? And they're like, whoa, what just happened, right? And that's and that what causes kids to get into so much trouble with money. Because if you don't teach them, how are they going to learn? They're going to ask their broke friends or they're just going to fake it because they don't want to look like they don't know what they're doing. They got to be cool, Right. So they're just going to like get themselves into a world of hurt. So, so, I mean, this is a practical way to teach them where you don't really have to, you don't have to be starting out with, oh, this is how you invest. And this is, you know, just live life with them. Let them see how you do it. Let them have a little bit of practice of doing it on their own in a small way. And when they mess up, they can come to you and say, how do we do this? How do I, how do I fix this? You know, you can say, hey, did you reconcile this month? Do you want me to sit down with you? And show you how to do that. You know, we use YNAB and um, it's really easy They can for them to reconcile. But but it takes them, you know, it probably took them four or five times because they'd be like, how do I, how do I um, import again? I don't remember, right? No. So, so um, and they love it and I love it because I don't have to be constantly handling money. Now, let me ask you a quick question and then we'll wrap up. But I, because I was going to ask, like, what budgeting tools are your teens using? So you mentioned YNAB. Now, are you getting memberships for each of them? Or, well, are they getting memberships for themselves? Um, or how does that work? Because I'm new to YNAB. I just downloaded it. Like, I just switched budgeting to YNAB. Um, right. So I'm not fully familiar. So how is that working with the teens? Like, do they have their own profile? Is it connected to yours? Yes. Do they pay for their own? Do they? They okay. can each, you can have as many accounts in there as you want. And I've heard that they're fixing to come out with, because you can see each other's stuff. I've heard they're coming out with something where they can't see, like they'll have separate accounts. I'll be happy for that. Cause I really don't like them seeing all my stuff. I, you know, it's not their business, but, but cube, are you familiar with cube? I love cube. 
Um, they have, it's like the cash envelope system, but it's digital. So you have a debit card and you load it up and you, there's a cloud, right? There's a cloud account. And then you put it into the different envelopes. So you'll have a grocery, you can, whatever you want to call it, grocery envelope, um, dining out envelope, clothing envelope. And when you go to uh, the store to, to buy something, you have to open that cube right then and there. It makes, it's very intentional. You see exactly how much is in that cube. And if you have more money on your, that you're going to spend than is in the cube, it's not going to work. So you either have to move from another cube into that account or you have to, you have to figure it out because if the money's not there, you can't spend it. Right. And I, I love you. And, and it also, they have a free, um, single user so you can try it out. Um, but they also, the, the cool thing about cube is the money does not stay on your debit card. It's, it's like in the cloud or whatever, or whatever they call it. Um, so you, when you open the cube is when it goes onto the debit card, that amount. And so somebody, if you lose your card or somebody steals your card, they cannot spend any of your money because it's not there. It's only there when you open it up to make the purchase and then it closes. So if you, and, and they are also coming out with a family plan. They keep saying they're going to have it anytime, which will allow you to have child accounts under there up to like 10. So they will have their cube card and they'll be be able to do the envelope system on, because I, I love the envelope system, but I hate having to carry money around and worry about losing it. And then like, I have the envelope, but you're at the store, right? So how is that supposed to work? So this way they can just, they just look on the cube, right? You can deposit their monthly salary into the cube and then they can put it into the envelopes themselves. It's like banking a whole nother way, but so I'm um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely because I'm also a fintech nerd. So I'm like, <laughs> I got to try all the things. But yeah. um, I'm Sign definitely up for the free account. You de- yeah, you definitely have my brain going on some things, especially because, you know, his 13th birthday is coming up. And I'm like, oh, like that would be a good birthday gift. It's like, hey, let's go ahead and start you know, you start controlling your own money versus, you know, coming to me saying, oh, mommy, do I have it in my account? Or, um, you know, that type of thing. Um, And he's a super nerdy kid. I love it. Um, So he'll probably really enjoy this and um, will like probably do really good. So I think that's an awesome idea for him. Mm -hmm. The, The hardest part for a lot of parents is you have, you can't bail your kids out. Like if they are out of money and it, And it's not something unexpected like, hey, I grew three times this year and I really need new shoes and I've spent all my clothing because I've had to, you know, that's not normal, right? Or we've had, there's some unexpected uh, school trip that, you know, the volleyball team won a championship and they need to go to now. You know, that kind of stuff, you, you, yeah, you're a parent. You're going to want your kid to, to experience that and... And you're going to be gracious and, but you're not going to bail them out for normal stuff um, because that's just going to hurt them. And then they'll come back and live in your basement. You want them to, you want them to be able to stand on their own two feet and figure stuff out for themselves and know when, you know, the budget is the budget and when it's gone, it's gone. Right. And, and I need to like have boundaries on where I, you know, what I spend, you know, if this this way really does not cost you any more money than you're already spending unless for, for us it costs us a little more because we want our kids to be in the habit of saving and giving so we give them more so that they automatically do get in the habit of giving a certain percentage but i mean if you th- shop at the thrift store make it make their budget a thrift store budget you know or if you have more money make it more money it doesn't matter um I, you ever watch the show Monk? Have you ever watched Monk? He's like this really, really smart guy who like can figure stuff out and he's highly intelligent and he's he's always like, it's a blessing and a curse. And so that's what I always say. It's a blessing and it's a curse that you have to figure it out for yourself. It's a blessing because you can design it whatever way you want. It's a curse because you have to do it. <laughs> exactly. But, exactly. <laughs> 
But if you can, if they can grasp this concept now, just think about the power of, you know, because most people don't get this figured out until they're, if they do it all, the, the, the savings, you know, learning to put aside money for savings until, until they're in their 30s or 40s, right? If they can learn this in their teens and start putting money away and just tell themselves, you know, I only, I'm only going to live on this percentage of my income, right? You know, we, we could all do that. Like, like if your boss were to come to you and say, Hey, the economy's doing terrible right now. I'm sorry, but everybody's going to have to take a pay cut. We're all going to have to live on 80% of our income. You know, uh, salaries are going to have to be 80% of what they are. You would find a way to make it work. So just pretend like that. that's the way, you know, from, from the start, pretend like you're living on 80% and it's just more freeing, you know? Mm-hmm. It's Absolutely. Just like, I completely, completely agree because that's definitely how I live my life. I um, every time I got a raise, I acted like I didn't get one. And I still live the exact same way I do now that I did when I was making like eleven, twelve dollars an hour. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, so uh, it's a mindset. Was, Yeah, absolutely. And just teaching your kids these principles early um, will definitely serve them very well in the future. So Rachel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Now, if people were interested in finding out more about you or your podcast, where could they find you? Um, I, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Rachel Murphy Coaching, but I have set up a separate page just for your listeners. If you go to rachelmurphycoaching.com slash tiff, um, I will have a free spending tracker you can download. So if you're like, huh, this sounds like a good idea, what would be the first step? What I would say was don't don't run, don't listen to the show and then run out there and say, hey kids, I've changed the way we're going to do things. I want you to just think about this for a little while. Think about how you're spending your money and just write down every time the date, what you spend it on, how much it was. And that'll give you a framework of, how much should my budget be for them for this, right? And do that for a little while and just be mindful of what you're doing and just think about it more. And then that that would be the first step for me um, to tell you. And then uh, there'll be a link to our podcast if you want to check out our podcast and a list of my top three favorite finance books for teens and... Also, you can, there's a link to Amazon to buy my book there. So just go to that. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you so much, Rachel. And if y'all did not catch that, we'll have all of those links in the show notes. I'm super excited that I have my own page on her website. Um, <laughs> but um, thank you so much for coming on the show and dropping all of these gems. I'm definitely, my brain is already going and I'm already thinking about what I could implement. I'm not going to do what you said not to do it. Just go like, we're changing everything. No, but I am going to make little changes. Um, yeah. Because and I make it a big deal. Helpful. Like, hey, mm-hmm. you're, you're becoming an adult now this is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change things and you're gonna get to be practice more adult you know make it fun and exciting and the little one will be watching to see exactly what mom does (laughs) well his thing is gonna be like it's not fair because that's what he always says why he's gonna be so anxious to for his turn (laughs) right so it's gonna be a big deal yeah all right well thank you so much rachel and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day (laughs) thank you for having me i had a great time Thanks. Thank you for listening, joining, and being a part of the Money Talk with Tiff podcast this week. You can check Tiff out every Thursday for a new Money Talk podcast. But if you just can't wait until next week, you can listen to previous podcast episodes at moneytalkwitht.com or follow Tiff on all social media platforms at Money Talk with T. Until next time, spend wise by spending less than you make. A word to the money wise is always sufficient.